So good evening, everyone, live from Rome. Our uh, nice talk that we're making almost all on the afternoon. And today, the uh, chat fly will be uh, with a nice guest from uh, Zimbabwe. We have the chance tonight to discover uh, the topic of, of course, of coronavirus, because this is the theme as we are used to uh, talk about with this, but related to women empowerment, in this case, uh, young women empowerment. So let me welcome our guest from uh, Zimbabwe, Zansa. Hello. <laughs> How are you, Hello, Zansa? everyone. <laughs> Hello, Salwonani Makadie and Yuha. How are you guys? I'm fine. Of course, I'm trying to understand what you said, that it's, uh, it's not very easy, especially I remember when we met the first time in US, it was not very easy to pronounce your name, but how's my name? Let, let me try again. Let me try again. So yeah. it's Nsansa. You got Is it. it correct? You got Did it. I say it again? Yeah. <laughs> you can say it okay. again for good measure. Okay, let's get, But why, why this? What you say when you are welcoming us? It's, uh, it's a typical language of Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah, typical language. So there's two main languages. There's more, there's other languages, but the two main ones is Sona and Debele. So I'm going to go and say both. <laughs> so Salvo Nani, and that's in my native language, Debele, which is, hi, how are you doing? And Magadihe is also the same thing as saying hi, but it's more formal. <laughs> okay. So it's a, it's a, of course, when you meet someone, when you introduce yourself, you will do, do this. And for people that, of course, we know Zimbabwe uh, is very famous, for, for many things, but in your opinion, when you think about Zimbabwe, what is the first thing that come in your mind? So I'll say what a lot of people say. A lot of it is about inflation, um, but <laughs> <laughs> because you know, we know our case about the country. Um, and then the big five, the Victoria Falls, wow. and wow. It's, we work hard as people, yeah. <laughs> so the famous, <laughs> the famous big five and the, yes. the Corona Falls, but, I think in this period, as in Italy, uh, you, don't not, you don't have a lot of tourists because now in Italy, as you know, uh, we are still in lockdown from more than 40 days, 45, 50 days, more or less. And there's no more tourists for now, even if it's, uh, we are trying to get it out. What is the situation in, uh, in Zimbabwe and now in your city? Um, so in my city, we have a lockdown right now. So the government uh, puts a 21 day um, lockdown. Um, and then they've extended it to an extra 14 days. Um, and I feel that that's the right thing to do um, in terms of responding to COVID. It is difficult because our economy, most of it is informal. So only 80% people, I mean, 80% of the people are unemployed. So that's a, that's a tough challenge for us people to choose between, you know, what, they, what their families are eating versus, you know, staying safe. Um, but I do think this is the best approach. Um, so currently we have 31 cases and four people have unfortunately lost their lives. Um, so it's not, yes, so it's, it's, it's still, I don't know if we've peaked yet. I, I don't think so, but yeah, that's really what we're looking at at the moment. Right. And, uh, of course, uh, you are leading your working in an in a NGO and we were together in, uh, in the United States for uh, the work that we made with our uh, NGO. Uh, the Nduna girl. Yes. Can you talk about more of this Nduna girl? Well, I'm very curious because I see your uh, Facebook okay. pages. And let me show also to other people that are looking at your great sure. work. <laughs> um, so I'll start with the name. Um, Nduna means chief. Um, and it's so chief. chiefs are traditionally men, but yeah. So uh, we're called Nduna girls. Um, so what we really are passionate about as an organization is providing opportunities for young people so that they can, you know, meet or fulfill their potential. So we do that through providing scholarship grants. Um, recently, we're not teaching young people and women how to make reusable pads. We also do that with oh, young wow. men if they're interested, yes. Um, so because of the econ economic hardships in Zimbabwe, it is quite difficult right. to, for women at least, to access um, sanitary pads. Um, and particularly right. if in rural communities, um, one of the major challenges is that even if you have the money, um, the, the shops don't actually have uh, the reusable okay. the pads of any form right. so only 40 percent of those shops actually have pads so it right. makes young people young young women and women in general they're vulnerable so they miss out on opportunities because of that um so right. we've started to teach people how to make these um and we feel right. that it's a 
sustainable solution and it's a fun thing to do it builds relationships with the, within the community so we're, we're quite passionate about that um and right. we also care about technology <laughs> um of course but yeah so i mean that's how everything is happening now um so if you just look at the photo there it's one of um yes. so our tech hub <laughs> and yeah. in the, in, within the tech hub um uh, we we focus on teaching young girls the basic skills and then we yeah. try to then build up to you know the coding but a lot of the times right. people are focused on coding coding and a lot of people don't actually know how to use microsoft word um and excel efficiently or google efficiently so we're trying to just uh, at least take the baby steps and then you know go to the to the coding so we we also do do some form of coding i don't know if you if you look at the photos um we're teaching yeah. young children how to code through microbits so that's quite fun <laughs> and none right. of us on our team know how to code so it's, it's it's kind of funny um that we're also learning as the girls are learning um so yeah <laughs> that so, really is us. this is for example so the target of um your ngo is i, I read this is empower uh, young women among 13 and 25 years old if i'm correct yes, yes. roughly so yeah. you you empower it with uh, of course a lot of uh, activities and a lot of So not only uh, we can say the classical um, kind of work, but of course a new way to um, technologies, coding, and give them the opportunity to you know to to practice new new things. So that's yes. correct. Yes. So uh, this is, for example, an activity you are making also for the um, uh, for the part. What is this? That I see, also, I see this is <laughs> so this is a group of girls actually learning how to make a reusable pad. Um, okay. And yes, yeah, so during one of our workshops. So what we do is, when you're part of our education grant, if you receive a scholarship, we also provide mentorship. And they came to the city, so most of them are from rural communities. So we bring them to the city center, which is Harare, and we expose them to different. We do a lot of skills, um, skills training, and that was for that day. That was one of the skills training. Um, and this is also an example of um, the girls coming to a workshop. And we typically show them things like etiquette. Um, sometimes we just show them museums because they don't have the exposure. Most of them haven't left their rural communities. So they don't know what what's out there. So most of the, the decisions that they make are based on the environment. And that's why we really focus on how do we expose young people? How do we enable them to make better decisions and for them to be to be able to take care of themselves really right so in in your opinion what is the most um difficult challenge that you have to face in general with a community or and mm -hmm. you know for guests coming from maybe a rural area or um, what is your main challenge that you in your opinion you have to face <laughs> with of course it's, if you want to talk about this Yeah, sure. Um, for us, I guess for me, it's the buy-in of of because we work with so many young people. So the buy-in of the community, the parents or the guardians. So sometimes they feel that this is this may not be necessary, and or right. you're working within a community where young girls get married early, and it just seems education is like a secondary thought, and it's not. It's almost like you're pushing boundaries and you know for all these things to work it has to be holistic the guardians also have to be on your side um because you know if you send a girl to school and they still marry her off you know it doesn't really we don't really achieve our goal so we have to really work um with the guardians and the teachers um for us to also be on the same page so that's quite challenging <laughs> wow so um, education uh, every time we talk about education same something that can be like in a second level of course uh first of all in some part of the world the first thing to do is of course mm -hmm. even in india everywhere is eating of course but as you know in some part of the world there's not uh, an easy access to food because of the war because of the uh, difficulty of logistics so uh, many times especially i talk for europe we forgot that even for us it's very easy to go out and buy food but in some other parts of the world it's not easy And of course, let me thank you to all the uh, United Nations agency uh, all around the world that uh, bring food and, of course, helping also in education. But education, how much is important in uh, education? And do you feel, can you feel, of course, the difference before and after you train uh, this girl with your 
uh, training court. Okay, so before, um, I just used to think that education was um, something that I just did. So I never, my parents would just, you know, send me to school. So I just thought that that's what everyone did. And then you just go on and get a job. Um, but then when I started working with these girls, I really started looking at it like full circle in terms of, it's not only the formal education that matters, mentorship matters a lot. Um, and even this, the the ease of access of information in terms of education. I think we don't talk about that. Is for, for some people, it's very difficult to, you know, get textbooks or it's difficult to even research. So how do you then get a, a better education if you're not able to research? Um, so I feel that um, even in terms of your, your, you know, parents, sometimes they struggle to assist their children. And so I, I start to look at that in full circle, that education, yes, is the formal part, but it's just the ability to make decisions, the ability to plan, to make goals, and that stuff is not really included in the formal education. So I've, I've right. really, yeah, I've thought about it quite differently now from the way I used right. to think about it. It was simple for me before. Right. So in this picture that we showing the live, we can see they are get inside your NGO, your, yes. uh, <laughs> I, I can reading shaping leaders. What, what happened in this, in this context? It's a very beautiful picture. Oh, in this context. Oh, this was what, like, one of our favorite things that we got to do. Um, so we, we received uh, funding from UNESCO to run, um, to be part of Africa Code Week. Um, so this is um, uh, child girls in particular, they're from Emerald Hill, the School of the Deaf. And we're really just introducing them into coding and we're using micro bits. It's, a, it's an easy way to teach young people how to code. So they normally use block language and then you can then see the java language and then you kind of get the basics of it um so right. it was really fun working with these with this young group of children and young girls it was yeah and interesting because um we were passionate of making sure that how can we use technology to ensure that everyone else is accessing um information or education and particularly people that are also living with disabilities how do we ensure that everyone is coming on with us and we're not leaving anyone behind um, so yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a challenge in terms of thinking of COVID. How are we gonna be programming and ensuring that we're, well, everyone that's supposed to get this information is, you know, how are we reaching them, the marginalized? So yeah, yeah. we're really thinking about <laughs> the way we wow. train. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. so it's normally like yes, a classroom think... setting. So that's <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have to think about that. <laughs> Yesterday, we had the chance talking about disability. You said a very important mm -hmm. uh, sentence. No one behind. Left no one behind. It's very important uh, payoff that we have to all repeat together. Yesterday, we have uh, in this live chat, Ziad, and he mm -hmm. talked about, of course, that disability is not a, a limit. It could be an opportunity, uh, a chance. So uh, we also have questions live from Facebook that I want to show. Of course, first of all, I want to show even some supporting people that are saying that impressive work do not care. So this oh, okay. is live from Facebook and thank you so much. But we also have um, a question live. So does your NGO work with donations and are people love to donate to your organization uh, goals? Uh, you were talking so, about the, the past <laughs> and the involvement of United States in this, the, the embassy of United States in this PEP project, if I read good. Um, oh, the PEP one. So that was, so we worked with an organization that received um, some funding. Um, and so they contracted us and then we assisted them. Um, and yeah. what was teaching them how, teaching their beneficiaries or their, their target um, how to make reusable pads. And what was really cool about that one is the whole community was involved. So it wasn't yeah. just only women, it wasn't just only girls, it was men and, and boys. Um, and it was interesting, they actually enjoyed it. So it was a good way to, I guess, showcase the issues around menstruation and um, the challenges that young girls feel and just the stereotypes that are involved with it. So it was a, it was a good, um, so we thank uh, the, the embassy for that funding because then we got to be part of it. Yeah, so the, yeah, the embassies uh, of US are supporting us in many uh, activities. So uh, the question from Inessa is of course that you also work with the donation <laughs> and, and it happens with the yes. uh, donation from the embassy. But we have also uh, other comments that I would like to show it to you. Uh, <laughs> 
from Nancy. I hope to pronounce <laughs> the name good, but yes, yes, we Nancy. Did. <laughs> I have to practice your language, one of us. I have to come <laughs> to Zimbabwe. This is a promise that I would like to do. So <laughs> keep inspiring the young women of Zimbabwe. So women empowerment, Zanza, how is important for you, women empowerment, and give the opportunity to more girls to have more opportunity and not less opportunity of men? Yeah, it's really like I am totally like passionate about that. And I'm passionate in particular in terms of how do we level the playing field? Um, and I'm also a bit passionate of making sure that as we are making sure that women are getting these opportunities that were being fair. Also, just thinking of young men too and young boys in terms of how we're educating them and what type of um, access do they have? Because I feel that the issue is really just being fair. Is everybody getting an opportunity to yeah. be better in life? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, because uh, many times it's not a problem of to be clever or not clever, but it's of course a problem of opportunity. We must give and we must start everybody uh, from the same point, considering the specific uh, necessity. Uh, we have another question that I want to to show you from another uh, very important NGO. Uh, from Ghana and Kaliech. <laughs> so we can read it together. You are doing very interesting work, impressive. So who is your target group for the coding? And are the rural communities interested in? Okay, so our target audience uh, is young people. So people that are from 13 to 18, so the people that are in secondary school or high school for us in Zimbabwe. Um, and we are normally, we like to work with people within cities and semi-urban areas. Um, the challenge with rural communities is just the power, the, the electricity issue and the access to the internet. So we're still working around. Um, if you look at this um, resource center, it's a container. So we're actually trying to figure out how we can have this container and have the several containers um, around Zimbabwe that have, that are powered by solar and have access to internet. So we're still trying to, fix that model, um, but I think we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> right, but so do you put this uh, container uh, all around Zimbabwe, how it works? So it's, it's like a little- So we would like to. <laughs> right. Uh, no, at the moment it's stationary. So we, we just um, fixed it up and painted it and fixed it inside. I'm sorry, I forgot what the word is. Um, and so it's functioning as a, as a resource center. So we can have a lot of trainings in there. Um, but what we would like to do ideally is to have the same structure, but a different one in rural communities where it's powered by solar. Because the one that we have currently is powered by solar, but this one has to be fully powered by solar, not to have any electricity um, issues there. So we're figuring out how can we have, make this accessible? Because in rural communities, the main cha challenge is sparsity in Zimbabwe, at least. We don't have large populations in one area. So people are about, right. on average, kids walk maybe five Ks to school because it's, it's, it's far. <laughs> so. Wow. so very impressive. Uh, I think there is a, thank you. There is um, also another uh, question, very important coming uh, from uh, Aruna Rashid Kroma that uh, I personally know, I personally thank you. He's a diplomatic representative here. Uh, in uh, Rome and uh, in making a great job with the uh, diplomacy. So thanks, Sansa, for the great job you are doing Thank for your you country. So <laughs> in the mind of donors fatigue, how is challenging for you to get funding for your program? And how are young girls in Zimbabwe appreciating you and your work? Yeah, the donors fatigue is one of the, we can say one of the most important uh, challenge that we have to face it on it. So yes, I agree. It's it's really challenging. Um, but I feel that we probably have to. At least what we do as an as an organization, we really focus on individuals. <laughs> it has been serving us well, and just forming really strong relationships with organizations, and you know, showing up, networking. I know it's the people say this all the time, but it does work. The issue is that it just takes longer than we anticipate in terms of building relationships, um, working with corporate. It, it takes long to build a relationship. So you have to be a bit patient with that. And in terms of our girls and people who receive, you know, that are part of our interventions, 
most people really enjoy them. Um, so it's, it's good. The only issue is that we're not able to reach as many people as we, as we would like to as an organization. So that's, that's where the issue of funding comes through. But we're looking at how we can be sustainable because that's the thing. You really have to be sustainable. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so where we're really looking at how we can, I suppose, have a form of income generating activity as an organization to fund our activities. So thanks again uh, to Aruna Rashid Kram and from Liberia. <laughs> that, of course, we are honored that you are following us. <laughs> and, and there is a nice other question from other colleagues, uh, Laura Vente. Uh, <laughs> I, we say hello, of course, to Laura. So how are you managing, keep spreading the great work you are doing versus COVID? Yeah, like at the moment, it, it has been a real big challenge, to be honest. Um, so we're focusing on creating at least a digital platform and creating curriculum for that for people to access. Um, but the, the other challenge is, do people have access to the internet or have the ability to buy data? So we're thinking about how effective is it for us to actually be online. We would be helping some people, but not everyone. So we're really, it has been challenging. And going forward, we're probably going to have to, you know, be, have sanitizers on hand, be more conscious about how we deliver these things. Because we have, it's normally in a classroom setting. So we have to have less people, I suppose. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, as we very nice. Forward. <laughs> so... Unfortunately, the time is over because, as you know, we have 20 minute live chat. We yes. want to go get to the point, don't waste any time. But I think it was very, very interesting to discover a piece of Zimbabwe thanks to Nsansa. So, live from <laughs> Zimbabwe. Oh, so, let's say <laughs> thanks to you. Well, and I say gra grazie in Italian. And thank you. As you know, how is how you can say grazie in. Uh, oh, gracias. Senor, okay. okay. <laughs> that's actually yeah. not the Spanish. Oh. But yeah, it's okay. In my language is Nyavonga and Tunutenda. So that's two languages for you. <laughs> yes, there's a, a lot of comments from Laura. For us, it has been a challenge to mm -hmm. not everybody from my target has access to internet. And this is another uh, problem that we have to face too. And of course, the language barrier, internet barrier uh, is very important. And we have uh, to consider too. So once again, thank you so much for this live chat, live from Rome and from Zimbabwe. Thank you so much, Tip. Thank and you. <laughs> I had you. Bye. And thank you to everyone Ciao. for following us. Next appointment is with Romania, following us to the next live chat. Bye. Bye. <laughs>